Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and uh, yes we're back with the um, Apricot Zen S and the good news is, um, no I hadn't bricked it um, basically I left it switched off for about 15 minutes, switched it back on and indeed the CMOS had lost them settings and we could um, boot back from the SCSI drivers C again I'll just switch it on and just show you it's actually still um, working nicely So obviously we've still got the same problem because we've still not got a backup battery but as you can see it's come back up as drive C again there. We'll strike the F1 key. As you can see starting MS DOS. And we have again booted um, booted into DOS. Now I've been playing with the BIOS uh, this um, Phoenix BIOS setup programs, so CD. And as far as I can tell, actually every version of this we've got here actually does work fine to um, control the BIOS or the setup the uh, BIOS in this computer. Um, like I said, we've got setup, we've got um, G setup, and we've got AT setup. Um, in fact, we'll just I'll just quickly go through them now so you can see see them. I'll get you on the screen a bit better. You don't need to see me or the computer, you just need to see the screen really, don't you? Right, there we go. Hopefully you can see that alright. And as you can see here we've got um, setup, G, G setup and AT setup. We'll start with setup. Now hopefully you can see that. Like I say, it's, it's not great um, to actually... Let's see if I switch. Does that make life better? Um, but basically, like I say, it's showing us um, clock chip lost power. Well, yeah, because like I said, we've no battery backup, uh, so C must check something invalid. Um, press a key. Now, it's, obviously, it's lost all its settings again, but um, it does seem to want to default to a five and a quarter inch 360k uh, floppy drive. Now, even if I change that, uh, it still won't allow me to um, boot from the floppy. So I do think there is another issue. Um, but we can change everything using this software. So if we go down to the um, A there, we can change that up to a 1.44 meg floppy. We can um, get rid of the um, hard drive. We can set the um, display to um, VGA. Now what the what mistake I made before is I hit Escape, which uh, reboots the computer. Uh, well, we still didn't have any of this set, that's why we ended up stuck where it was trying to boot from the internal hard drive rather than um, the SCSI drive. Anyway, so what we do need to do, we press um, F10 now, that will quit us out of this. Back to BIOS. Now, interestingly, we can try, like, G setup, and it, hopefully it should actually retain them settings that we just um, set up using um, setup. Because basically all these three programs do exactly the same thing and they all seem to work quite fine with the Apricot um, hardware. So let's just go for um, G setup. They all look slightly different as you can see but basically they work exactly the same. So we've got um, set CMOS uh, uh, RAM parameters, uh, diagnostics which won't, doesn't seem to work on this version of uh, the BIOS. Uh, prepare system for relocation, which I presume is if you've got like an MFM or RL hard drive, or indeed a very early SCSI drive, it's allowed to park the um, hard drive. But uh, let's press 1. And it has actually retained what we've just put in there, if you can see. We've got the, um, flop the floppy drive A is a 1.44 meg. Um, nothing for um, B, no hard drive C or D. Um, Primary drive, it says special EJ because perhaps this um, was actually wrote before um, VJ was a thing. Let's just see, see if we can change that. Nine. Yeah, it's EJ slash PGA. Which I think was, um, I think was that what VJ was called before it became VJ. Right, so basically, yeah, um, that seems to work fine as well. Now, um, I think F1 to help. 
Right, oh yeah, sorry. So we'll press escape, press escape again, and we can exit back to DOS. And we we'll press uh, four. Oh, you know, this one wants us to reboot the system, but uh, we'll do that now. I think it's still, it'll still come up with that one error because of the um, clock. So it'll still want us to press F1 at the moment. We'll press F1. And the computer should boot now off the SCSI hard drive. Yeah. So I'll just show you the AT setup. So they're all just a very slightly different interface, but basically they're exactly the same. And as you can see, it's saved everything still. Um, Disket A is a 3.5 inch 1.4 with no B, with no um, hard drives. Um, we've got the RAM, EGA, VGA. So basically exactly as we have before. Now uh, if I press F10, that'll knock us back out of there. Again, if you hit escape, uh, it would reboot the system. Now the problem is, at the moment, yeah, we've got all the BIOS set up and we're reasonably happy with it. Uh, but if I obviously shut the computer off and now, say, leave it 20 minutes or so, and reboot the system, um, we're going to have lost all them settings again. So what we really need to do is we need to find a way of um, retaining those settings and what my plan is let me see if I can get, you, get me in shot as well there we go what the plan is I, I don't know what I'm going to do permanently yet um, what I really don't want to do is put another one of them just back on the board I could do these are still available I can order them about six or seven quid I think something like that they're not expensive but then you've got the chance that this is going to leak um, in the future again and possibly cause more damage to the board. And you know this this thing's lasted quite a long time. It was built in what even 19, I think it's 1989. This one, it's either 88 or 89. I think this one's 89. So you know, cause it's lasted this long, and we are not far off getting it into a good working system. Uh, I don't want to risk really putting one of them back on the board. Now, what we've basically got with these is it's um, one of the Varta cells, it's a um, NICAD, so it's a rechargeable um, battery at um, 3.6 volts. Now, we've got a couple of options. Um, one of the most common options is to use um, one of them little button cells and a um, blocking diode to um, prevent the actual motherboard trying to charge a non rechargeable battery um, unfortunately I've completely out of holders for those uh, little coin cells at the moment uh, have my doubts about um, if you look at the size of the capacity of that and of one of them coin cells that whether the coin cell would actually last very long um, plus of the fact like I said this is a 3.6 volt battery then coin cells only output 3 volts and once you've put a blocking diode in there as well, which is going to perhaps lose you about another half a volt or so, you've only got about two and a half volts um, to retain the settings. Now, that is, that's not exactly going to say that's not going to work. If you remember, this battery is designed to keep the settings for reasonably long-term storage. It's going to have to be able to keep the settings um, really for more than um, this depletes to under two and a half volts, you know, it'll have to get down to one and a half volts, possibly two volts maybe, before we're going to start losing settings and that battery will be considered depleted. Uh, what I'm going to possibly do for now, just as a, a quickie, so we can actually play about with the computer a bit more and actually retain some settings, I've got a couple of AAA um, batteries there in a holder, and I may have to, I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to need a blocking diode or not. For the simple fact, these batteries, have you noticed, that's the ground pin, is the single pin on the back. 
uh, the positive is actually two pins on them. Now there's a chance that on this motherboard it gives you the charge voltage on one pin and the other pin is the pin that will supply the um, backup for the um, CMOS. If that's the case I can use the ground and that the pin that would go to that to um, connect up to that and it'll just work. Um, I don't have to worry about the batteries being reverse charged. I don't know if the board is wired up like that or not. It could be that them two pins just go to exactly the same on the board and it gets its power in that way. Like I, say, I don't know. That's what we're going to have a look at next. So what I'm going to do, I'll get the board bit... I'll get the SCSI board and um, all that off here basically and set up and we'll do some basic tests on the board and see whether the two positive pins there actually indeed do have um, a voltage on them when it's applied or whether it's just one and like I said one is um, waiting for um, power from the actual battery which is a possibility so um, like I said I'll just um, get us a bit set up a bit better and get rid of some of the stuff we don't need on the bench and we'll, um, we'll have a look at that right okay we're all set up and I have to admit it does look a little more crusty around this area than I actually um, anticipated um, it did after I cleaned it up I may have to actually go back over this area um, just the odd little deposit which I couldn't see before which uh, I can see now but basically what I've done I've got this completely stripped down to bare bones so all we've got is the motherboard connected to the power supply with no video connected nothing like that because we don't need anything really don't need anything else connected so we power the board up and what I want to do is we'll switch the um, meter onto DC and we know that this is the ground point for the battery here so we'll connect onto there and then we're going to try the two power points one over here see if there's anything on there, right, there's no there's honestly no voltage there let's try the other one and there's our 3.47 volts this one again got no no discernible voltage there now what I'm going to have to do now in fact we can just quickly check I want to see if there's any traces that actually go to that pad it could just be a ground it just um, an anchoring pad for the battery if it is just an anchoring pad for the battery then obviously we're going to have to use some kind of um, blocking diode for the um, battery backup um, however if that pad is actually connected to the clock um, somewhere on the clock then um, I think we're going to actually be um, in a good position we can use the ground point there and we can use that and we can basically just power it off these um, these three volts so I know it's um, 0.6 of a volt lower than the original battery pack but that wouldn't be a pro that'd be absolutely fine I mean I'm not planning really to leave these in here permanently I don't like the idea of these um, I mean these aren't that bad really they're just uh, heavy duty um, zinc carbon but ideally I want to find a better um, battery solution but for the time being it would allow us to actually store some settings I just want to have a look on the other side of this board and see if that trace actually do does go anywhere and unfortunately no it doesn't it is literally just a um, an anchor point so that one there is just an anchor point so we are going to have to use them and a, um, a blocking diode of some um, description um, I will see what I can dig out now and we'll have a, um, a look at actually connecting this up and uh, once then we can see what we can do about actually getting the uh, it to retain some CMOS settings so uh, back in a sec okay we're back uh, basically what I've done, I've just salvaged a, um, a diode off a scrap board and I've just stuck that on there so if we look at the output on that now there we've got just over 3 volts, these are brand new fully charged batteries, they're showing about 1.6, 1.65 volts um, each like I said they are brand new so even with the um, drop or the voltage drop off the diode, we've got like I said, just over three volts there, which should be okay. This should work actually. 
So what I'm going to do, I've got some longish pieces of wire. And I'm going to solder those to that battery holder now. And then we'll solder the other sides to the um, where the battery holder was on the on the main board. And then we will um, have a bit of a bit of another test. We'll have to get it set back up with the um, SCSI hard drive and what have you. And this time, I shall see if it's going to save its um, settings. All right, let's get these soldered in. So I'm not using any fancy um, tools, and this is probably not going to stay. This is just so we can um, just play about at the moment. I'm going to find a better solution. We'll probably, we might even end up with a, um, I know I said before a knot, but uh, we might actually end up with an ICAD. But what we'll do is we'll put it on uh, flying leads and have it somewhere else in the case where it's not actually going to, um, if it was to leak, it's not going to cause the um, utter devastation that it does when it leaks on the main board. I'll just tin these, um, tin these wires up so we can solder them on neatly. Could do with redressing the um, tip on this soldering iron. It should be good enough for this though. There we go. Those are tinned up so we can connect those to the uh, to the battery holder. We have to be a bit careful, these are really, really cheap battery holders and they melt as soon as they see um, see the soldering iron, but just tin that oops. That was one. Just tin that uh, end of that diode up there. So this is not in any way um, permanent. This is just going to be a way so we can actually uh, see if it's going to retain its CMOS settings. Although possibly, yeah, with a new holder and because this is uh, just a holder I had lying around in a bits box, it's not one of the best ones. That's dropped on the floor. Where's my glasses? Right. Oops. Get that soldered on there. That's not a very good joint. Not too happy with that. Let me just see if I can clean the tip on my iron. I think I've got a bit of contamination on the end of the soldering iron, and it's not a. Uh, just give it a quick clean with a file. That's better. Because it wasn't taking solder very well. That's more like it. It's a problem with these really old irons. It's a fun iron to use this for every now and again, but. Obviously I won't be using it to do anything very delicate or fine, but when you just tack in a few wires on it's fine. There we go. That's better. And then we need the um the negative wire. We'll just tin that up a little bit there. There. there we go. And that'll be our temporary um, supply for the CMOS battery. I'll keep the wires quite long and then we can have it, well, maybe it'll stick it to the side of the power supply or something so it's out of harm's way for the time being. Let's take the batteries out for now. So actually with these um, really cheap little holders like this, it's um, better to solder them with the batteries actually in because it helps 
sink some of the heat away from the actual um, contacts and it doesn't tell, tend to melt the plastic as much. Alright, there we go, that one fell on the floor. Let's grab that back. So that's our holder. Also, we need to keep the wires. In fact, the wires are just about right. I'll strip the other side. And those are ready to go into the board. I've actually just spotted that the uh, negative connection on the board there is not actually clear, so we need to just clear that hole there and get the, uh, the solder sucker out. Right. And get that hole there, that's for the uh, negative side. Sucks out. I have to add a little bit of fresh solder to it. You see what I'm doing here? Yeah. There we go. We're through there now. Just tin these wires up and we can solder them in place. Just makes life a little bit better just to um, tin them up before you stick them through the holes. Right. Tin that one up. Turn this one up. There we go. Now the white wire is our positive wire, which needs to go to. Ow! That was a little bit hot. Get them off my desk. The white wire is the positive wire, and that needs to go to. Which one did we say? That first one there. Just put that through there. And we'll solder that into position. Like that. These are a little bit overkill, but they should just about be able to do it. Yeah. There we go. That'll do for that one. And then we need the negative connection, which is that one we've just un um, unblocked. Which is that one there. So that's that wire there. Again, we'll just solder that into position. There we go. So these are a little bit big really, but my other ones are I'm not actually sure what I've done with my other spare set. There we go. That was enough anyway. So basically, yeah, that should work quite nicely. We can mount can mount that somewhere else in the case, anywhere we want really, um, and we don't have to worry about um, the battery leaking. Like I said, I'm still not 100% sure what my end. Um, I mean, I suppose if it works well enough and this is going to last long enough, and the batteries are well out of the way of the main board, it might be a it might be a permanent solution. I'm not sure yet. We'll stick. Well, what I'll do is. Um, 
I'll unplug my solder now so I don't burn myself again because I've burned myself um, on my arm quite nastily the other day. Um, what I will do is um, I will get set back up with the um, SCSI hard drive and everything. Uh, we'll put some batteries in there and we'll see if it's actually going to um, retain its CMOS settings. So uh, I'll get set back up and then um, we'll be back in a sec. Okay, we're all set back up and plugged back in. Um, I've got the little um, battery basically here, um, just out of harm's way for now. So let's switch on and let's see what happens. Oh, it helps to plug the uh, other end of the IEC lead into the power. And then let's try to switch on and see what happens. Okay, so far so good. Obviously in valid configuration yet. Let's let it boot into um, DOS. Let's hit our F1 key. Right. Try, try the original setup. Clock chip lost power, yes, we know that. Press the key to continue. Now we can, should be able to set this up. Now, messing about before, I actually think, as ridiculous as it sounds, that this computer is actually um, Millennium compliant. So it's January, February, March, April, May, June, and it's the. It's the 24th or 20 something today, 23rd. But here's the best one 2000. Oops, it was 2023 there, I've gone, I've gone too far. 2021. So it's actually, this computer made in like, is it 1988, 1989 is actually millennium compliant. Um, right, we need to change that to a 1.44 meg. Um, we don't have a Type 2 um, hard disk installed, we don't have any of them hard drives installed. We need to change that to VGA. As far as I'm aware, that's everything right. So we want to press F10 to exit. Let's press F10 to exit. Now hopefully that will save that information into the BIOS. Let's just try uh, G setup. In fact, yeah. And let's see whether it's going to show us the dates and everything that we just put in there. So, we'll press 1. Look at that. Time I didn't actually set, but the 6th of, 23rd of the 6th, 2021, that's the date that we just put in. You can't see that, sorry. I'll just bring you up a little bit. The hard drive is still saved as what we had, which is the 1.44 meg. Everything else is set as I just set it using the other program. So uh, we'll press escape. Um, and we'll press exit, number four. Uh, pressing a key to reboot the system. And hopefully, when this reboots, it's going to reboot without any errors. Keep your fingers crossed. Now, see time of day clock stops still. Let's go come up with the F1 key error again. Well, let's just try. Try set up again. You see, everything is there as it should be. So I wonder why it's still coming up with that error. What we can try actually, just to prove that that battery is actually working, um, what we can do is we can actually just power the computer off. So um, we'll shut this down, F10. We'll actually turn the computer off. I am just going to give it, say, 10 minutes or so, and we'll see whether what happens when we switch the computer back on again. 
on um, again so I'm just going to um, pause you and I'll come back in about 10 minutes right okay well that's been a good a good 10 minutes uh, let's switch back on and let's see whether the computer's actually retained any of them settings so it's still complaining about the clock time of day clock stopped I wonder if there's something actually wrong with the um, with the clock let's hit the F1 key let's see if it's actually uh, retained any of the other BIOS settings So our date's correct, uh, it's correct with the, one, the three and a half inch 1.44 meg floppy, it's kept the VJEJ settings. So basically the battery backup that I've used in there is working. So it looks like we may actually have a fault um, somewhere in the actual um, clock. Now, in the, what about in the not like in the clock circuit, but in the actual real time clock? So I'll have to see if I can identify which I see is the uh, real time clock and do a little bit more investigation around there. Now that is going to be somewhere near where the battery actually leaks, or possibly there is some damage that I haven't um, spotted so far. But so far, we are making a little bit of progress. Like I said, at least the computer is uh, able to. Um, boot up now uh, we still do have like some so we have that ed that error but it is at least the CMOS is saving settings now because um, we didn't actually get a CMOS checksum error then if you um, notice let's just try one of the other ones if you notice like I said it's firing up and it's not actually bringing us up a um, CMOS um, error or anything it's just bringing all the settings up I haven't actually seen the clock move, to be honest, it just zero. I wonder if actually there is a fault with the um, real-time clock I see or something like that. That's some, like I said, that's another project we'll have to look into on this. Just as a quick final thing, now we know for certain that the BIOS is set right. We've got a um, 3.5 inch um, floppy disk drive here, which I know works. I've got a floppy disk here, which I know works. If this still doesn't boot from this um, floppy drive, I am pretty certain that we do indeed have a fault with the onboard um, floppy disk controller. Yeah. And I know that both the drive and the uh, floppy disk definitely work 100%. So I think we've got a, um, a fault with the onboard floppy disk controller. There is a uh, it's Western, Dis uh, Western Digital um, floppy disk IC being used. Um, so that's something else we are going to have to have a look at. I said I really want to try and prove that using a um, another I/O card, but I still haven't been able to track one down um, in my collection, and I'm not paying twenty odd pounds for one on eBay. It's just a bit, you know, it's over what I'm, I'm prepared to pay for just a basic spare part that uh, one will turn up at some point. Um, and to be honest, floppy disks aren't the, you know, it's not the end of the world if the floppy drive doesn't actually work on this. It'd be really nice to have it working for completeness. Uh, but with the SCSI card in there, um, and a network card in it, um, really, I can, I can get all the software that I want to get onto the computer onto it that way. Uh, like I said, getting the floppy working is just going to be nice for completeness of the system. I do not need that to, for it to actually work. Um, I'm still, I'm, I'm ta I was originally toying with the idea of putting um, that ad lib sound card that I um, built up in this. But I'm kind of um, going to use the idea of perhaps putting a, a Sound Blaster clone with an actual um, game port on it so I can use a um, game pad on it. Unfortunately, I don't really have enough expansion slots to run the SCSI card, uh, an ad lib card, a network card, and a game card because I've only got three ISA slots. 
so it's it's going to be a compromise that it's do I run with the ad lib card or do I put a um, later Sound Blaster clone in there that's actually got a game port on it and then I can use like my um, game pad and things on the computer. But that's that's well for in the future. Um, that's we're nowhere near that yet. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you enjoyed this little update and just to reassure you, I didn't manage to brick the thing. We are actually making some progress. Like I said, at least now we can um, save our CMOS settings um, using that little uh, battery hack there. But it does look like we do have further problems. Like I said, it does look like um, the real-time clock. It just isn't working on it and we do still have that uh, floppy drive issue. But... Um, like I said, that's, um, that's all the fun of working on these very old um, systems and getting them back up and running again. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you enjoyed that little um, bit of progress on this project. So thanks for watching and goodbye.